Hi, I'm Alfred Baker today. I'm making some round frames for Rene's embroideries. Several years ago, in 2015, to be more exact, René made these embroidery masterpieces. Last year, I wanted to give her some special frames for such beautiful pieces. Here's what I did. Hmm, not bad. In fact, I started by doing a test. I didn't know if it would work. For this test, I used reclaimed wood from a dresser I dismantled. I think it will be perfect for my test. There are so many holes in this that I won't be able to use it for anything else. I cut 8 pieces out of it that I glue together. Put that on the CNC and I have my first frame. That's it. <laughs> for some of you who really want to know how I did this, <laughs> just stay. I will explain it later on. The next two frames will be made of walnut. So I surface some wood. After ripping it to the right width, I cut 16 pieces. With all those pieces, I will be able to make two frames. But when I put eight in the circle, I see that my sum hmm, is not accurate. I have a small gap, but uh, it's not a big deal. I recut two sides with another angle. And the gap is gone. I can glue the pieces together. As a clamp, I use three pipe clamps end to end. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. The next day I can begin. The first thing I do is to bolt a piece of plywood to the CNC table and laser burn the shape of my glue up. With all those lines, it's easy to figure out where to screw the glue up to the table. Then it's time to remove all that must be removed at the back of the frame. Uh, there's a lot to remove. It takes an hour. It's quite long when you have to follow the router bit with a vacuum. Even if this is the back, it's important to have precise cuts. I guess you're noticing that in the middle of each line, there's a pocket with the shape of a duck bone. Now I have to cut them. Those will reinforce the joints. This joint is almost just a glued butt joint. When I have enough, I cut them out of the piece of wood and split them in two. Here they are. All that's left to do is to glue them in place. A little bit of glue inside the pocket and on the biscuit, I put them in place and I'm done. When all eight are done, it's time to clamp this. While the glue dries, I can cut the back of the other frame. Glue the biscuits, clamp this, and I need to wait for the glue to dry. Like I've said before, cutting the back takes an hour. So the glue is already dry. This means that I can remove the biscuit success. The ideal tool for this is the drum sander. When it's done, I resand the back with the orbital sander. I do this now because it will be too difficult when the frame will be carved. Before I can carve the front, I need to make a mold to hold the frame in place. Another happy hour following the bit. I really don't like working with MDF because this dust flies everywhere. Now that I have a mold, I can put the frame inside. Turn it around, drill some holes and screw the frame to the mold. Next I screw this onto the CNC table. Now I have to be sure the bit is exactly in the center. For more precision, I switch the end mill for a V-carve bit. With this one, I'm sure that everything is aligned with the center. Then I put back the end mill 
and zero the Z height on the top of the frame. Then it's time for the roughing pass. At least this is not too long, about half an hour. Then I switch the bit again for a super fine ball one. As a matter of fact, this bit has a diameter of half a millimeter. You can figure it out more when you see it next to a lead pencil. All the details come from this bit. I just need to reset the Z height again and start the carving. Here I have a little bit of time to talk about how I made this design. As a matter of fact, I have 32 hours and 20 minutes. Last year, I bought a bunch of fancy picture frame STL files. There are hundreds of them. In the end, only those were to my liking. And I ended up choosing this one for Renee's frame. So I started with Aspire to draw this shape. In fact, it's the shape I've burned on the plywood, which is the shape of the eight pieces glued together. Then I designed the back of the frame. With the program, I was able to see what this would look like. I was very satisfied. Using all those lines again, I was able to make the mold to hold the frame to the CNC table. As you can see, the preview is exactly the same as you're seeing on the table. Then it was time to take care of the front. But the frame I've chosen is flat. I don't like that. So I designed a rounded, slanted base and applied the frame on top. <laughs> I like it. To carve this, I used two bits. The first one will remove the bulk of the material. The second one will carve the entire design. With this one, the carving time is 32 hours and 20 minutes. When I saw the final result on the screen, I was sold. But I'm not done yet. I have another frame to carve. Even now that the frames are completely carved, I'm not done. They need a round pane of glass. So I cut a circle to the size that I want the glass to be. Next, I use it to cut the glass. Ah, it's not perfect, but I managed to cut it anyway. Since it's not perfect, I need to remove the bumps with the sander. In the end, this works pretty well. I managed to cut all the glass. The end is coming. Now I need to take care of the carvings. I scrub them everywhere with a soft brass brush. In certain places, the brush can't remove the small stubborn pieces of wood. I need to use a knife and a pointy tool. With all those small crevices, this takes time. Then I can sand the exterior. <laughs> no, I don't use power tool because I don't want to mess up my work. Now I'm ready to apply the finish. First of all, I blow away all the dust. I begin with the light frame. To finish them, I'm going to use a spray brush. The varnish mm, is a bit too thick, so I dilute it with a bit of water. This is not very fast, but it does a pretty great job. When the back is done, I spray the front. With the walnut frame, I want to do something different. I add stain to the varnish. I try this on a scrap piece and this is to my liking. So I do it on the real thing. The walnut I used has a lot of light sap wood. I don't really like that. With a tinted varnish, I can blend the colors only by applying more varnish on the light sections. One thing I can say is that this works pretty well. Here are the three frames after their first coat. I just need to wait for the varnish to dry. And this doesn't take long, because there's not a lot of varnish on them. After rubbing everywhere with a scrub pad and cleaning it up, I can spray the second coat. 
This time, I only spray clear varnish on all of them. When they are dry, I burn the night on their back. <laughs> yes, I know, it's pretty small. I'm not done yet, because I need to cut pieces of masonite to hold the canvas in place. I also need to cut the back of the frames. I have all the pieces, but mm, the masonite was reclaimed. And I don't like the different shades, so I stain them. When the stain is dry, I spray them. Here, you can see why I didn't use a spray can for the front. Just look at how the varnish is spit out of the can. My last signature was pretty small, so I laser burned a bigger one at the back. It's now time to assemble them. The first thing to do is to try to remove as many wrinkles as I can. Renée told me that she didn't use the right canvas for her embroidery. I think I won't be able to remove all of them. But by prying all the fabric from behind, it might be better. I tried to pull from every direction, but it's not easy. <laughs> Luckily, the back is not visible, because we can see that the embroidery expert at home is really not me. Okay, this is outright ugly, but at least it will stay in place. The important side is this one. I'm not done. I need to install the frame turns. For this, I use the holes that I've drilled to hold the frame in place. This also needs a hook. I begin by marking where the holes for the nails will be. Then, using a small headless nail, I drill some pilot holes. Finally, I'll nail the hook in place. The end is coming. I clean the glass and put them in place. Then, René's masterpiece, and finally the back. And voila, the three frames are done. It took me a full week to make, but I'm super happy with them. The details are extraordinary. They fit well with René's embroidery. On top of this, I hardly add any misadventures. Only one destroyed frame. I was happy about it. Yes, one of my compressor brushes broke. The breaker jumped, the CNC didn't have any air pressure, and I had this as a result. But this is far less than last year. <laughs> yes, I have started this the year before with my old CNC. These are all the failures I had. Nah, this is not a joke. The quality of my old CNC was less than perfect. Each picture that you see is a different frame that was ruined. The carving quality is only good enough to start out with wood stove. It's night and day compared to what I just did. I love them. Let's check together if René likes them. Oh. <laughs> yes, she loves them. Not even half an hour later, she asked to put them on the wall. Okay, it's true that this looks way better than what was there before. I hope you like the Christmas presents I gave René last year. For myself, I'm super happy with the final result. The details are incredible. But I have to admit that the real masterpiece is René's embroideries. With the frame that I made, they really show them off. Merry Christmas and see you soon for another episode 
of the woodpecker.